There's almost no better example of how experts get things upside down lots of times than the spike in crime in Canada since the Liberals came to power in 2015. From 1990 to 2015, crime trended downwards mostly in Canada. Murder was down, bank robberies were down, sexual assaults were down, plain ordinary assault was down. And that's largely because crimes like that are caused mostly by young men and the population was aging. There were fewer young men. And it's not since 2015, as crime has started to go back up, that there are more young men. There aren't. What there are is more people who are suspected of crime or who have been convicted of crime out on our streets because experts say the best way to reduce crime is to reintegrate criminals into society. Yeah, I guess that's a nice theory, but in practice, it has not worked. This week, Statistics Canada released a report on police reported crime in 2022. It goes back, the statistics in this report go back all the way into the 1980s. And what we're seeing is there was this steady trend downward until the Liberals started making reforms to bail and parole. And since that time, there has been a sharp increase in violent crime in Canada. Murder is up 39%. Sexual assault, no, the most serious sexual assault, which we used to call rape, is up by more than double. Robberies are up. They're not as interestingly not up as much as, as some of the other violent crimes, but personal violent crime is way up. In Edmonton, we had a case early in July where a father of seven who'd immigrated here nine years ago was stabbed to death by a stranger at a transit station. Toronto's had problems too with people attacked out of nowhere, out of the blue, by strangers. The guy who killed the father of seven in Edmonton happened to be out on parole, at, uh, uh, sorry, out on bail at the time. He was awaiting trial for other violent crimes. And what did he do? He committed more violent crimes. We have decided as a country to release the people who are most likely to commit violent crime and let them free on the streets on the theory put forward by the Liberals' experts that that's the best way to reduce crime. It's insane, is what it is. I think there is no better example of how ridiculous this is than the spike in crime. In Canada, since 2015, when the Liberals came to power, the overall incidence of serious violent crime has gone up 40%. Gun crime has gone up over 100%. And you say, oh, yes, well, of course, you know, have all these bad law-abiding gun owners who won't turn in their weapons that have been banned by the government. Of course, that's a crime. I'm not talking about administrative gun crime. I'm talking about people pointing a gun at someone else in order to commit a robbery. I'm talking about people shooting someone else. I'm talking about people committing real gun crimes. It's doubled despite the fact that the Liberals have decided to take away all sorts of rifles and shotguns from ordinary citizens. They've banned handguns. It's not what causes crime. These are the theories that Liberals and other progressives and their experts have come up with and the recent experience of Canadians is, it's just not working. For Post Media, I'm Lauren Gunter.